Um, we have two notices today. Um, Colin will have the, the DVDs for April and May ready soon. So again, if you know of anybody that would like these, uh, please get in touch with us. And the second notice is about the summer newsletter. Believe it or not, summer is almost here. <laughs> um, so if you have any articles, please pass them to Linda, Hugh or myself as soon as possible. And certainly before the 18th of June. Um, that gives you about three weeks. So please think about what you want to put in the newsletter and send it in to us. Let's now turn to a time of worship. In 1 Timothy 1, 17, it says, To the eternal King, immortal and invisible, the only God, to him be honour and glory forever. And these are the words of our first hymn, which is Mission Praise 327, Immortal, Invisible. over now to Susan who's going to lead us in prayer this morning. Susan. Thank you Anne. Let us pray. Let us remember the Creator God. O God the Father, we thank that you are the Creator God. We thank you that you have made all things and have made them well. That you have given to us all things richly to enjoy. For the beauty and the bounty of this fair earth, we thank you, O Father, who has made all things and all people. Forgive us if in pride and selfishness and in anger we have misused your gifts and have used for death that which was meant for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember the Redeemer God. O Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, we thank you for your redeeming power. You love us and we see your love shown most clearly on the cross where you gave of your life to conquer death and to make well the brokenness of the universe. We thank you, Son of God, who loves us with a never-ending love. Forgive us if we have treated your love lightly as a little thing and if we have shown little love in return, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
let us remember the Spirit of God. O Holy Spirit of God, we thank you that you are with us at all times and in all places. For the guidance which you give to us, for the knowledge which you have given to us for your continual upholding, strengthening and protecting power. We thank you that you are with us, Spirit of God. Forgive us if we have tried to live alone and have been reluctant to walk with you or draw strength from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now as we say the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now our next item of worship is let your living water flow.
Thank you, Susan, for leading us in prayer this morning. And we're going to hand over now to Elaine, who's going to do our readings for us. Elaine. Thank you, Anne. Uh, today's first reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 27. In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness and the power of God was moving over the water. Then God commanded, let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. Then he separated the light from the day, from the darkness, and he named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. That was the first day. Then God commanded, let there be a dome to divide the water and to keep it in two separate places. And it was done. So God made a dome and it separated the water under it from the water above it. He named the dome sky. Evening passed and morning came. That was the second day. Then God commanded, let the water below the sky come together in one place, so that the land will appear, and it was done. He named the land Earth, and the water which had come together he named Sea, and God was pleased with what he saw. Then he commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of plants, those that bear grain and those that bear fruit, and it was done. So the earth produced all kinds of plants, and God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the third day. Then God commanded, Let lights appear in the sky to separate day from night, and to show the time when days, years, and religious festivals begin. They will shine in the sky to give light to the earth. And it was done. So God made the two larger lights the sun to rule over the day, and the moon to rule over the night. He also made the stars. He placed the lights in the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed and morning came. That was the fourth day. Then God commanded, Let the water be filled with many kinds of living beings, and let the air be filled with birds. So God created the great sea monsters, all kind of creatures that live in the water, and all kind of birds. And God was pleased with what he saw. He blessed them all and told the creatures that live in the water to reproduce and to fill the sea. And he told the birds to increase in number. Evening passed and morning came. That was the fifth day. Then God commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small. And it was done. So God made them all, and he was pleased with what he saw. Then God said, and now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female. The next reading is from John chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. From the very beginning the Word was with God. Through him God made all things. Not one thing in creation was made without him. The word was the source of life, and this brought light to the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. And we will now sing, Father, we love you.
Bible reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to, for if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God, God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. Amen. Thank you, Elaine, for doing all these readings for us this morning. Our next item of praise is Everlasting to Everlasting, You Are God.
message there is you are the one true God. We're going to hand over now to Colin, who is going to lead us in our time of reflection today. Colin. Thank you very much, Anne. Good morning, everyone. In the church calendar, this Sunday that follows Pentecost is celebrated as Trinity Sunday. It offers us an opportunity to reflect deeply on the very nature of God himself. The actuality of God's nature as one in essence, distinguished in three persons, those persons being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, is a fundamental doctrine of the Christian faith. This eternal truth was the focus of the councils of Nicaea and Constantinople, held in 325 and 381 AD, respectively. In both cases, the Council reaffirmed the actuality of the Trinity, together the one living and true God, and that each person of the Trinity is equally deserving of our worship and obedience. In the years since, however, there have been many opinions voiced to challenge this fundamental truth, with some even suggesting or outright accusing that the actuality of the Trinity was an invention of the councils. Returning to the very beginning, both of our universe and of the earth, and the Bible itself, Genesis chapter 1 offers us some fascinating insights into the very nature of God himself. The eternal nature of God is the first truth that we can derive from the text. He clearly exists before the events of creation take place. He was there from eternity past, before time as we define it began. As God was, so he is today, and so he will forever be. But there is something even more interesting that we can derive from Genesis chapter 1. In fact, we can find it in the very first verse. In verse 1 we read, in the beginning, when God created the universe. The English word here, God, a singular noun, is used here in the Good News translation. In the various English translations of the Bible, we miss something profound here from the original Hebrew text. In Hebrew, the word translated God is Elohim. Elohim is the plural version of the singular name for God, El. This is our first hint in scripture that the one God exists in three persons. And we find it in the very first verse of the very first book of the Bible. Further to this, we read in verse two of the presence of the spirit of God moving over the water. The Hebrew word used here for spirit can also be translated as awesome wind, which provides a compelling parallel to the account of the believer's experience of receiving the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. In the reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1, we find evidence of Jesus, the Logos, or Word, also present at creation. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Note that the text reads, was with God, suggesting the presence of others, equally God, but distinct. And the final statement is, the word was God. Singular in both the English and the original Greek, pointing towards the oneness of God. Verse 26 of Genesis 1 also points towards the presence of all three persons of the Trinity at the very moment of the creation of the first human, where God says, and now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble 
us. Note the use of the plurals, we and us. All persons of the Trinity are not only present here, but are all involved together in the process. Here we have the very essence of the oneness of God, one God in three persons. Interestingly, when you take a look at all of the verbs in Genesis chapter one, used to describe the acts of creation, you will notice that they are all singular, again emphasizing the oneness of God. There are many other books and chapters in the Bible where we can read evidence of the actuality of God as one God in three persons. One occasion that immediately comes to mind is Luke's account of Jesus's baptism by John the Baptist. There in that one moment, Jesus, God the Son is present. God the Holy Spirit is descending from above like a dove. And the voice of God the Father proclaims, you are my own dear son, I am pleased with you. Again, here we can see the oneness of God, the interconnectedness of all three persons of the Trinity. Indeed, as disciples of Christ and believers in the one true living God, it makes sense that all three persons of the Trinity in an interconnected manner are active in both their own walk of faith and in our lives together as members of the church. In Romans chapter eight, Paul reminds us that this is the case. It is only by the transformational work of the God, the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we can kill the sin in our own lives. It is God, the Holy Spirit that is drawing us to oneness in the church, the body of Christ through our faith in Jesus Christ, God the Son, as our Lord and Saviour. It is the indwelling of God the Holy Spirit that is the assurance of us having genuine saving faith in God the Son, and who therefore allows us to rest assured in our redemption as children of God the Father. In preparation for a conference this month, I've been reading Tom Gregg's book, Dogmatic Ecclesiology. It is a reflection on the theology of the Protestant Church, and so delves deeply into the theology of the actuality of God as one God in three persons. Greg reminds us of this. It is the constancy of the Holy Spirit's faithful activity in the event of the church on which the church's unity across space and time rests. This one eternal Holy Spirit who is the bond of union and love between the eternal Father and the eternal Son, is Lord and is with the Father and the Son to be worshipped and glorified. Any unity in the church is derivative of the unity which exists in the one God. So let us seek to serve the one true God in loving unity, offering our praise and worship to him, one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The next hymn offers our worship to all three persons of the Trinity. It's Mission Praise 237, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
for that illuminating and thought-provoking reflection this morning. We now pass to Marlon, who's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Marlon. We offer our prayers for others, to the God who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Already present in every place, already bringing good out of every evil, already holding every person in love. We hold in our prayers those who walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, give light. We hold in our prayers those who are oppressed by violence and war. Lord, give peace. We hold in our prayers those who seek to lead our communities, our nations and our world. Lord, give wisdom. We hold in our prayers those who find it hard to believe, who struggle with doubt. Lord, give courage. We hold in our prayers those whom we try to share the good news of your word. Lord, give grace. We rejoice in your promise to be with us always to the end of the age, as we commend all those for whom we pray into the care of our three-in-one God. Amen. Let us sing a favourite of congregations throughout the country, Mission Praise 857, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Thank you, Marlon, for our time of prayer. And we're now going to pass to Tracy, who's going to lead us in the grace this morning. Tracy. Thanks, Anne. Let's bring our service this morning to a close as we normally do. Let's share in the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>